Hey everybody, how's it going? So thanks for coming along to this lesson of Planet Coaster Top Tips for Realism. It's lesson number 14 and it's one I said I would never do, but it's here by popular demand. This week, it's lighting. So when it comes to lighting, you've got two different types of lighting. You've got area functional lighting and you've got decoration lighting or decorative lighting. And so I thought it'd actually be a nice idea to come into two different parks that show those quite well. Now remember, it's not for me to tell you how to design your parks. I'm not going to be telling you where to place your lampposts. I'm just going to give you some pointers so that you can add some realism to your lighting. And of course, you're all familiar with Raygate Lake. Hi guys, if you're coming to me from Channel 5, welcome aboard. Uh, that was a bit of a surprise. I didn't expect that at all. So really really nice to have you guys along along for the ride um so here's raygate lake at night you've seen this already at the end of the videos um i did this my own tour at the end of the the series and of course channel 5 did it at the end of their video uh, and you can see already that there's lots of variation in the light so we're going to focus in this part of the episode on your functional area lights now these are the things like your lamp posts that you place down your floodlights your uh, internal lights that you have inside buildings and then we're going to move on to decoration when we look at fundy fun spot and that's the type of things that you find around rides that light up the track and your stuff that you find on the actual rides and, and, ev and everything so we'll focus on that one secondly uh, so you can see already whoops in this one that uh, there's a lot of stuff going on in this front area plaza you can see it's very bright in some spots and it's not so bright in in others so you just need to understand where you're going to place your lamp posts and where you would naturally find uh, light sources. The idea is that you don't want any singular pitch black area of your park, but you don't need to brightly light everything. Uh, it's just like sparingly and dappled around because light is going to throw. Uh, even in this area here where it looks dark, you've actually got some thrown light coming from this area and also the lampposts that are here as well so this wouldn't be completely pitch black but you'll then also see at the front of the park here that this is a bit like wait what it's really really bright and these lampposts down here they don't throw that kind of light in game so how do you do that so i'm going to show you how to do that but first let's just talk some theory so uh, your functional area lights then as we said these are your lampposts these are the things that you use inside uh inside your buildings and you just need to understand what types of lights you're going to use inside your buildings are you going to use fluorescent lights are you going to use up lighters are you going to use um mood lighting are you going to use any kind of other lighting you know sconce lighting or that sort of that sorts of things so in this gift shop i've chosen to use recess lighting now the recess lighting is all in the top here and the design is that it hits something that's reflective in the roof and it bounces down and it throws the light into the building underneath so as a result you have to think about temperature of the light the temperature of the light is all about how uh, hot or cold the actual colour of the light is, rather than the, the temperature is in hot or cold. Um, so in this instance, you tend to find that this is a very bright light, and it's thrown onto a, a light surface, and then the light is then refracted down into uh, into the actual building. So as a result, you have this like light throwing. I'm going to show you how to brightly light your areas uh, in a moment. So another um, thing to look for is when you're looking at your... Um, your lampposts that you've got in your area that are lighting your lighting your ways. So I tend to use the lampposts that have got the biggest light throw on them just because it tends to be a bit more realistic. I mean, there's some of the lampposts that don't throw any light at all and you have to do some real proper work to it. Uh, but the idea is, like I say, you don't want any pitch black spots where you've got people that could wander. And the reason for that is safety. You don't want to put people through um, all sorts of horrors of like, like, you know, being mugged and attacked and whatever that sort of stuff happens in, in pitch black. Where there's an opportunity, people will do it. So theme parks will always use stuff like this. Now this is okay because you've got lots of flower beds around and you can put in some decorative lampposts and it lights the way using multiple lights. But when you come over to the Titan area, we have here... Uh, a nice little plaza where you've got some decorative lighting going on and it's colouring the, colouring the way but there's no real lampposts in the middle and you can't really put lampposts in the middle because it doesn't make design sense so instead you use floodlights and the idea of that is the floodlights will air, will light a massive massive area of the park when using one singular light um, and so I'm just going to pause that because that gyro is really loud uh, so yeah you, you're going to be using one singular light to highlight the whole uh, the whole way and so with that, there's some techniques that you can do to increase the flow or the throw, should I say, of the actual light itself. So if we come back to the to the front of the park, 
uh, I'm going to show you how to do that. So here we have Bergs, um, and we, we've just been like mentioning throw of light and how the light will come out from inside open buildings and windows and stuff. But we also need to remember that coloured lights, if you're using them anywhere, will also have a throw to them. So these lights in the game, they don't actually throw any light anywhere it's like you, you place them down they light up at night they look awesome but they don't actually have any throw to them so this is what i've done here uh, i've actually included this kind of uh, coloration so you've got the blue the red and it, and it alternates so in here it's actually a bit of a pinky color and that's because that's the combination of the blue and the red now how did i achieve that i hear you ask so if i select this area I've just got to make sure I get it right. There we go. Uh, so you can see I've just got one building. It contains 147 items. I'm just going to raise this up and suddenly the secret is revealed. So this is essentially a grid of lights that are the same color as the ones inside. Uh, and then I've also just put a line uh, that go that's going to be outside of the building. And I've also included the colors in the same order as the, the burgers. But then I've also underneath here i don't know if you i don't know if you, we're going to have to grab it uh, but underneath here there's also some box lights that are pointing out that throws the light onto the ceiling i can unpause this now uh that, I, that throws the light onto the ceiling so, uh, onto the roof should i say sorry so you got the blue you got the red you got the blue you got the red you got the blue so and then when you combine those two together it creates that area the area ambience of the color being thrown now this is where you have to remember about temperature so your lights that you've got in the ceiling they're going to be a little bit brighter but the lights that you've got underneath here they're not so bright this is where you start using really dull colors really dull tones so you can see in here i'm using actually a gray i'm not using white or a light a light gray i'm using a really dark gray and likewise with the red i don't use a bright red to achieve come on uh, to achieve what i want i use the same sort of um hue if you like uh, but i'm actually using it as a red and the blue is exactly the same come on Forgive the frame rate of this, guys. If you didn't know, a million pieces. <laughs> so there's the blue. So the blue then just throws on. Uh, and then once I've done the entire grid, and I normally do it up above um, or like literally on the ground, if I then just move it back down, you can see that slowly but surely it starts to light up the ground. And then I just bury it slightly underground you don't need to go too far uh, because if you do go too far you'll find that you start to lose it again um, and if you don't go far enough it's not uh, it's not like bright enough but it depends on what kind of ambience you're going for I mean this could actually work this could be better than doing it slightly brighter for example it depends on how bright your building is inside to know how far down you need to bury the uh, bury the lights so this is going to be a little bit dull and duller and it's going to be a little bit more um, timid but it gives you the same gives you the same idea and then if you have a look i've done the same for all of the buildings so that grid is also prevalent here and because this is really bright i've kept it bright uh, the same with the ticket offices the same inside the offices so if you've seen inside here it's really brightly lit and like sickly so and this was a design choice i wanted it to be sickly and bright because offices tend to be sickly and bright and then in here i mean you do get some shadows but you just kind of have to work you kind of have to work with that because you, you're almost cheating the light engine into doing what you want it to do um, and then in here a bit more softer a bit of softer palette um, and then outside here you've just got area lighting so you've just got the uh, the lights that are coming off of the warehouses and again i've just used the same effect um, i've just buried the grid underneath and it's just creating a soft dappled light into the area where there's actually no uh, there's, no, there's no pitch blackness um, let's see somewhere else that this is this is true then so over here uh, this is another example of me doing this uh, exactly the same principle exactly the same method so let's just grab whoops it's so difficult to get them because they're so buried underneath I think this should be the two that we need um, so where's my arrow where is it no, okay. Did that didn't work. Let's try again. Oh, and not the building. There we go. One. That's better. There we go. So, raise it up. And I've just got done exactly the same principle. And again, because this is using the red and the blue, I've just thrown the red and the blue onto, uh, onto the ground. And again, I've used exactly the same principle. It's a, um, it's a dull 
version, a, a really dark version of the red, and a really dark version, come on, <laughs> of the blue. The, pro the problem with having a million pieces is eventually the game becomes a festival of forgotten clicks because it's so busy trying to process everything else that it forgets you're clicking somewhere. Uh, so yeah, there's the dark, there's the dark blue, and then if we just place it back in to the ground you can then see that the the light is now throwing uh, onto the ground the same works with different colors so you can do it with blue uh, sorry with yellow and greens uh, I've done that elsewhere and you can also then start to do the insides of uh, your games units because they're going to be really brightly lit right so you're going to want them to be brightly lit so people can see what they're actually doing so inside here that would also be brightly brightly lit um, you can also have the same effect then when you're using your floodlights. So when you're using the floodlights, you just place the grid down um, into a, the kind of area that you're wanting to go for. Uh, and then you can just light the area by using the one singular floodlight. So in theory, if I were to delete this, it goes. But underneath, there's that dappled uh, lighting effect that's going around. And then over on the Titan, I've just done exactly the same thing. Guess what? It's a grid of lights underneath the ground. Um, there we go. But this one is just using slightly different colours. So this is purposely using decorative light for um, everything. You know, like this is using the, the, the orange and the pink that it uses. So there you go. It's lit up already. Then I'm just using the grid to back it up and just make it a little bit tighter. Titan. See what I did there? <laughs> oh, cringe. I'm sorry. Please stay here. Uh, and then inside Curse Drake for the Manor, this is where it starts to get interesting when you're when you're using your lighting. Uh, so we talk about this quite a lot in the principles of the uh, of the ride video. By the way, if you did come from me, uh, come to me from Channel Five Gaming. Whoops, uh, there's a load of videos that didn't load. Um, so I'm sorry about that. I don't know what what happened, but you've got loads of multimedia in Curse Drake for the Manor that didn't actually load. But anyway. In here, then, I've used really low-level lighting because it's supposed to be a dark ride. So the idea is that all of the stuff that's above the your top of your head is all in pitch black. And then you just have mood lighting that's down below. Uh, and it's just setting the mood inside. So um, we're using the, the haunted house stuff in here just to create that really, like, dank lighting. And then in here, just in time, uh, it's again, it's dark because there's some effects that go on here. So you've got some moving headlights, you've got the lightning, and then you've got the video screen that's on the right hand side here. So this area has to be very low lit. So what you then tend to find, all right, witch, <laughs> you tend to find uh, lots of floor lighting. So uh, lighting that will come up from the floor and it just lights the way rather than um, actually being physical uh, lights. When you come inside your dark ride, you tend to find that all of your lighting is above your head and it points down. Now the idea of, of all of that is so that it's supposed to obscure everything that's going on above it. So you can see in here you've got all of your AC units, you've got all of your um, your, your gantries and everything where uh, people would walk. You've got all of the light gantries and stuff. And all of these lights in here would actually be bright enough to blind you enough to not know what's behind it. Uh, so it just creates like a, a carpet of light above your head so that you can't actually see it. And then you just lo use loads of area and decorative light underneath just to dapple it all out and just to make it uh, distracting enough so that you don't actually see what's above you. Hello. <laughs> then inside here, you just again, you use all of that uh, area lighting and the mood lighting just to make it look quite good and then when you've got enclosed spaces like this this is when you start to use your different lighting and you start to you start to swap it out so all of these are direct lighting but again everything in in cursor drake manner is actually placed above your head so it's all on the gantries that are above it there's nothing other than wall lighting there's nothing here that's directly lighting anything from below or from the ground so if i come up this way and come through the roof like this you can see all of that all of that in action all of this lighting here that's flashing now this is all in the gantry above uh, and then you've also got all of this stuff here is that low level lighting but there's uh, there's nothing else like this is the only thing that you would see there's no other gantries that are spoiling the view but you've then just got some mood lighting that's at the top here uh, and then over this way, it's all exactly the same. All of this dappled lighting and this orange lighting, it all comes from the top. So
So that actually leads me quite nicely to say that this is a principle that I use over in Fundy Fun Spot. So Fundy Fun Spot is where all of this gets interesting because the pyramid is an artificially lit dark enclosed space. And so for this, we're going to need to crack open some film school tips. Oh, amazing. So of course, I'm going to show you around all of this in a second. Now, if you do want your area to look naturally lit, then you're going to want to point a light into a brighter surface. And this is then going to reflect light back into the room and then diffuse the harshness of that source light that you've got. So think about pointing a, a light into a white surface, for example. Now, if you want to highlight something important that you're using within your park, then use something called key lighting. This is literally pointing a light directly at something. And if you want to emphasize shadows, then you can use low key lighting. So things like box lights pointing up from the ground or onto a wall, for example. And then if you want to fill a lot of space, then you can also use high key lighting, such as floodlights in the rafters of buildings. And if you do want to be dramatic, then you can use hard lighting. So unlike the darker dull colors that we saw in Raygate Lake just a second ago, this is going to be much brighter, harsher, bolder colors. And theme parks use this for jump scares. So think about reds in a haunted house, for example. And then if you also want the area to be more immersive, and this is where soft lighting comes into it. So use more pastel colors appropriate to the theme that you're using. So think about blues and turquoises and greens for things like seaside and beaches. Also remember though that up and down are not your only ways to light things. So you have side lighting and different angles that can create awesome effects on the things that you want to light up. And then lastly, also just decide on the mood that you want to go for and then use those effective colours to emphasise that mood. So if you want a playful mood, for example, use vibrant colours, your pinks and your oranges and your yellows. But if you want to use the area to feel warm, then you're going to need to use reds and oranges. If you want a colder feel, then you should be using greys and blues. If you want tropical, you're going to be looking at greens and oranges. If you're going to be using uh, coastal areas, then you're going to be looking at orange and blue. And then if you're going to go for scary, you're going to be looking at reds and greens. But if you are just lighting up a ride, then there's nothing wrong with just using the colours of the ride. You know, it's whatever you prefer. And I just need to prepare something before I actually show you around. One second. So I've come back into an old save of Fundy Fun Spot and look, everything's gone. It feels really weird, um, but I don't want to spoil too much because the Fundy Fun Spot episode is coming up where we do the tour. So I've come back in and, and this like this is the last bit that I did before moving on to the outside. So Fundy Fun Spot then is supposed to be a fun, vibrant place. So to start with, I've started off with those very vibrant colours, you know, the pinks, the greens, the yellows and the, this really bright blue. But then the actual area itself is split into three different distinct zones. So you've got the carnival area at the back, you've got the pirate area here, uh, and then you've also got the Aztec, Mediterranean, South American, whatever you want to call it, uh, area down here. And the colours represent each area. So you've got your warm uh, oranges and reds that are going on down here. Uh, your carnival is very vibrant it's supposed to be bright think of mardi gras uh, think of jamaican uh, carnivals and everything and that's kind of the colors that we've gone here so you're looking at the blues the reds the yellows um and the pinks and very vibrant and then over in your pirate area you've got your yellow which represents all of the lights that go on uh, in the pirate area but you've also got some drama going on so drama lighting going on in the sense that it's the blue and the yellow so you can see then that this is all set up on gantries um and it's set funding fun spot is set into two different height zones so we've got like a ceiling that's that's in here and then you've got the gantry that comes up into the pyramid so for the gantry lighting i've used the floodlights um i don't often get to i don't often get to use them and so i had to forego realism with this by the way if you haven't watched the episode uh in favor of decent lighting because well, the original roof that I had was 600,000 pieces and now we know what Funny Fun Spot's turned into that would just be a disaster uh, that's 60% of Raygate Lake in case you were wondering so I keep making a thing about a million pieces don't I a million pieces uh, so yeah everything is is all set up and I've just dappled all of the lighting along but I've used the same principles that I did before so with this one if where I want the the lighting to be a little bit more vibrant it's still a dark version of that color look um so the actual I don't know if you can even see the cross on the uh <laughs> on the video but the cross is here um so I still use a dark version, but it's lighter than the dark version I use for the ambient lighting outside of Raygate Lake. But elsewhere, I've used the same color, but I've brought the lighting gradient up. And the same applies with different shades and different colors. So this green, for example, there's the green there. And later on, I use a green that's more down here. So I've not only have I varied 
the colours around so it's creating this dappled lighting. I've also then changed the temperature of that colour just to give a, a difference in that colour. So I'm not just spamming around the same colours. It creates a bit of depth to the colour. Say some, say colour some more. I'm quite enjoying it. <laughs> and then when we come into the, uh, the Mediterranean area, you can see that everything is all very warm. It's all fiery. And, and that's what you want from this area. So I've just used lots of... Uh, oranges and reds and yellows in this area just to accentuate that just to really pull it off and, and accent it and then on the lower ceilings I've used not the floodlights but I've used the spotlights because they throw light in a certain direction and they have this uh, round effect that dapples onto the ground below so I just really wanted to, to pull that to pull that in and then I've also just used the same technique that I use in Raygate Lake for the inside of these kind of buildings so where it would be a little bit brighter that's what I've done I put the grid underneath and it's sitting underneath the underneath the floor um, wow the frame rate on this is really good I've forgotten what this is like uh, and then because I wanted to highlight stuff on this roller coaster uh, I made sure that I was using direct lighting on this so that you've got the direct lighting onto the onto the blue and then you've also got the red onto the statue and it and then the red onto the um onto the temple so I've made sure that that's a that's a thing and then from this side I wanted the volcano to light up so I pointed the yellow towards it so where is from up top it's just a, a kind of it's a lovely mess of color it's a rainbow of color but it is a rainbow of color but from down below all of those additional colors that you've got the green the red and the blue uh, and the yellow all merge into one color and it just creates this beautiful uh, this beautiful beautiful effect that I wanted uh, to have and then over in Mardi Gras um, this is the the idea of using that low level lighting that I was talking about. Uh, let's just get oh, really bad camera work. Come on, uh, <laughs> this is the low level I lighted I wanted uh, because I wanted to make a feature of all of the street lights. So for this uh, instance, you use top level lighting looking down just to light the area, but you don't want to go too harsh because you you would start to drown out the light that's actually generated by. Uh, these actual fairy lights, the strip lights. So what I've then done is really low down, buried another grid that just contains the grey, the really dark grey that just makes sure that the light is being thrown from these fairy lights. But I'm also allowing the area light to do a lot of the colouring for me. Same applies over here as well. You can't really see it because I've, I've just I've made it bright. Uh, but the green, the white and the red is reflected down here. You can just see it. It's really, really subtle. Um, I'm hoping actually it's going to come out on the on the video because it's that subtle. But it's just there because the light is obviously reflecting off it and it hits the ground. But this is not a light source. So it wouldn't be a bright light. It's more of a light reflection thing. And then coming over to the carnival area, you see this in practice a little bit more because these these guys, by the way, are still stuck. Uh, if you remember the episode where I said I'm going to leave them there. Yeah, I did. Uh, sorry. So you can see then that this one, I've actually taken the principle of the light throwing a little bit more seriously. So here you've got the red that's been thrown down here. You've got the purple that's been thrown down in this direction and it merges with the pink. And then you've got the yellow and everything that's coming down here. So... This is the neon that lines all of the uh, all of the area, and that's all uh, that's all there. Make a feature of the octopus, so that's why you've got direct lighting that's hitting this. Um, and because the colours of the ride are the blue and the yellow, the lights are blue and yellow. So this is the principle of just using the ride colours to rock, to light the ride. It's it's perfectly it's perfectly okay. And then we come across this way to the drama lighting. Um, which is where we start using the low level lighting actually hidden inside the building. So this isn't top level lighting looking down. This is actually using the box lights within uh, within the actual build itself to create this this lighting. So I've hidden them, uh, but they are they are all there. And then I've just allowed the box lights here and the area lights to actually light up this area here to create the drama. So that when the roof goes back on, if I control Z, when the roof goes back on. You can now see that it's dark above, and you have the um, yeah you have the focus being left on the actual castle itself, and then coming back into the other area for the pirates, then it just turns into that warm. I've forgotten how loud this area was. Let's pause it, uh, and then it turns into that really warm piratey area again, where everything is those yellow lamps uh, that you've got going on. Um, and inside the gift shop, I've just used the same grid, but I've used a yellow grid 
on the inside of this gift shop rather than a white grid because I wanted to create that ambience. And then just to bring the fun back from Fundy Fun Spot, um, just so it's not so boring and so dull, I've then just added in the, the dappled colours, those bright, vibrant colours, just to accentuate the wall because up above you've got all of the... Uh, all of the lighting that's coming on that's generating all of these different colors um, and all of these different viewpoints in terms of color and I just wanted to also bring it into the wall just to make sure that it's a complete consistent thing through and then the last thing to show you is in the bar uh, so the bar is exactly the same principle it's it's all lit from uh, wall lights there's no grid in this one because this is supposed to be dark uh, because you've also got your up lighting and, a, and an actual uh, gantry of dance disco lights so you tend not to have very bright lighting in an area that you want the the disco lights to do the work for you so that guys is pretty much the end of this tips video i really do hope that you found that uh interesting um let me know in the comments below actually if, if this is going to help you and let me know if you have any successes off the back of it. So thank you so much for coming along. Really do appreciate it. Uh, please share this round if you found it helpful. A like would be most helpful. Uh, but otherwise, guys, until we speak again, please look after yourselves. Take care. Bye bye.